mm-hmm. in the world. Yeah, Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Yeah. yeah. So John took Star Wars in 96, and I was to play Jabba the Hutt the first mm-hmm. time. And I kept asking where the Jabba the Hutt costume was, and everyone kept saying to me, you know, you'll find it. Or someone was like, oh, we have it, we have it, we have it. So the re- dress rehearsal, we still did not have this Jabba the Hutt costume. Oh, and at that time, I weighed, I was considerably overweight, and I <laughs> loved it. I loved it. Being fat, it was wonderful. But um, at that point, I remember looking at myself in the mirror, and I took off my shirt, and I was like, "I don't need a costume." <laughs> and I grabbed this blanket and I wrapped it around my legs as the Jabba tail. And I, of course, at that time in my life, I had a puppet from Burger King. It was the it was the puppet that was from the the got the. The gargoyle from the Hunchback of Notre Dame. That's right. It was that little female puppet oh, from the nurse so from Sister Act. But we're mm-hmm. getting too gay right now. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, I had that puppet. I'm like, and this is going to be my salacious crumb. Yeah. So the dress rehearsal, I come out, wrap myself in this thing, contort my face, do the whole boosh. <laughs> and my tongue is really long. You can ask a lot of young men. And... and uh, I would stick it out and it'd make these faces and Patrick just went crazy. And then opening night, we did the show. And if they like something in Scotland, they not only applaud, but they rumble their feet That's on the ground. That's right. They would. And I was like, I did the job of the hut. It was the, the, the applause. The laughter was so incredible. Mm-hmm. And the rumbling was so insane. I literally thought the, the theater was coming. I was like, what's happening? Because I didn't know. <laughs> And then the next day, like the reviews came out and it was like, Michael Cornaccia's job of the hut is its own special effect. And <laughs> we sold out every night, not just because of me. It was, it's a brilliant show. Yeah. Brilliant show. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. I mean, just the idea of wiffle ball bats for lightsabers, actor switching. It's really like, thank God, yeah. Patrick T. Gorman. We all went to school. We had the ability to do that. Yeah. You know, because it, it really was. And we sold out every night yep. from 12 to 1230. John made more money in that summer than I think he had made most years. That's why he brought Star Wars Trilogy 30 Minutes every year oh, then. Oh, he got pissed when I didn't want to go back. I'm yeah. like, dude, I, that's college. Like, I got to get out in my world. And I yeah. got to get an agent. I got to audition out. I got to make money. I can't go back to Scotland. And, yeah. Yeah. We're know? not getting paid. Or we no. got like some little bit of stuff. I and, get shit. Most yeah. people paid a ton. Yeah, exactly. Like, so crazy. But then we did the Star Wars play for many years after that. We did the celebrations. We did the the run in L.A. where yeah. we got reviewed by Variety. People would come, and it was the same Huge. kind of reaction. It was so much fun. I mean, I would get so fucked up before that show. Yeah, I bet you would. Well, the show was on. What do you mean you bet I would? So did you, you <laughs> fuck. The theater was on top of a did bar. I? Yes. Yeah, the, oh, yeah, we would drink beforehand. We would tr- it yeah. was the trilogy. Maybe yeah. not as much as me, but, yeah. like, you know, I, I've kind of had my Definitely part afterwards. Down. You had a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I would get stoned in the ticket box, box ticket. What the fuck's it called? A box office. Box office. <laughs> I was a theater major. Thank you. Can't even remember box <laughs> office. Oh, my God. We, I'd shut the door and get stoned in between shows. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, my God, it was a blast. I want to do it again. So do I. But like, I, last time we did it, like people were pulling legs and hernias. Like, we're a little too old. Like, you're jumping around and stuff. <sighs> Yeah, you but know? Then, and then you know when Lucasfilm was acquired by Disney, that was kind of the end of it. Disney was uh, oh, they'll never let us yeah, do it. They'll yeah. never let no, us no, do no. it, which is a damn shame. But I mean, I'm surprised we were able to do it. How long we did it yeah. with Lucas's blessing? I know because he loved it. Yeah, he, he loved saw it. it. And I, I was not able to. I did not go to that because my dad had died. Isn't that crazy? That's right. My dad had just died That's tragically. Right. Was, I know. And everyone said, we're going to go up. Lucas wants to see us. And I said, you guys, I cannot be Jabba the Hutt right now. I know. That fuck. I know. I would I be about so that. famous right now if Lucas saw my job. <laughs> he would have I wouldn't be here. No. On this piddly who? little Mark, show. Who? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh my God, dude! Well, yeah, you and didn't... I miss doing it in front of the other guy, the one who directed uh, Star Trek, because he saw it too. Remember, he sent us all cupcakes. From... Oh yeah, JJ. JJ, my best friend, got married, so I missed that weekend. That's and JJ what... Abrams saw it then. He also directed the new Star Wars. Yeah, and he's directing the next Star Wars. Yeah, he's well, and be... Star Trek. He's going to be huge, dude. I know. I I really think What's he has a good future. JJ Abrams. He's going to remember that. I will. You I'm... heard it here first. Yep. It's an G. exclusive. JJ Abrams is going to be a huge writer director. We will see how it shakes out. Hollywood could usually eat him up. So, but he has a good head on his shoulders. I think so. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. But.